Here are the four main types of discontinuities that you talk about in your calculus class. And I have seen professors ask you to state each of them and give uh, a graphical example. So let's do just that. The first type is removable. Now a removable discontinuity looks like this. It's when you have a seemingly continuous graph except at one point. So my graph would be continuous all except this little value here and it's like a instead of this I've got the hole moved down here. And the idea is you can just uh, remove this discontinuity by kind of placing this hole and filling it in. Uh, algebraically those look like things that you could factor. Um, so if you had Let's say, I'm just making this up really quick, uh, really quick x squared minus 4 over uh, x minus 2. You can kind of already see that this would be discontinuous at 2, because if you plug in 2, you would get 0 over 0. But the thing is, if I factor that, if I factor the numerator, that's a difference of squares. It factors into x plus 2, x minus 2, and I can cancel those x minus 2s, and I'm just left with the function x plus 2. And well, x plus 2, we know that's a line with slope 1 and y intercept 2, and a line is certainly continuous. There's no breaks or gaps in that function, so you can see that we removed that discontinuity from this function. And just redraw what that looks like, an open hole and the hole somewhere else. That's what a removable discontinuity looks like. A jump discontinuity. As you might expect, I'm continuous to some certain point and then my graph hops and it goes somewhere else where there's like a, a jump. Ah, that's where I, get, I guess it gets its name. Uh, so at this point, there's a jump discontinuity. These things usually happen from piecewise functions. So if I had, say, x squared, if x is less than 0, and then if x was greater than 0, I had, um, uh, I don't know, let's just say I had the function 1. <laughs> kind of boring, but that would look like, well, before zero I was x squared, and then after zero I'm just the horizontal line at one. So you'll see here I hop up to something else. That's a, an example of a jump discontinuity. Infinite discontinuities, well, those are asymptotes. So if I had the graph one over x, one over x looks like this, has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, the y-axis. This is an infinite discontinuity. Maybe I should draw a different one, just because uh, that one's kind of hard to see. Let me draw one over x minus one. That looks like this. Same function, just shifted to the right by one. This has an asymptote at x equals one. And you'll see that this function is not continuous where the asymptote is. So if I took the limit as x approached 1 from the left, I'd get negative infinity. If I took the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, I'd get positive infinity. Since the left-hand limit does not equal the right-hand limit, the limit does not exist. And if the limit doesn't exist, you can't be continuous. That's just a definitional thing. The last one, and the least common, is an oscillating type of discontinuity. And that happens with periodic functions, so like sine and cosine. And what happens is you get really close to a point, the function starts to oscillate so quickly, you can't quite tell what's going on. So it, it's like oscillating like an infinite number of times in this little space. Uh, so that happens with certain types of sine and cosine functions. I don't have a good example for one right now, but 
Um, these are the four types of discontinuities that you're pretty much required to know, at least for your first test. If your professor asks you to state all the different types, boom, 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 and you can draw three graph or four graphs, <laughs> sorry, just like this one, and you should pretty much get full credit for that. All right, please like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you think. Have a great day.